Hey guys, it's Cam from Craft and Tailored, and in this episode of What is on My Wrist, we are talking about a 1992 Tudor Submariner. The reference is 79090, um, and it is super cool, and I'm very excited to talk about this because it's no secret, here at Craft and Tailored, we are fans of the Tudor brand of watches. We love Tudor. I think there's a lot of value in Tudor. Um, I wear Tudor watches myself, um, and I think there's a lot of interesting elements of Tudor that you don't find in Rolex, and I think that makes them interesting and worth collecting and geeking out about and et cetera. So what's kind of cool about Tudor in this time frame, in Tudor Submariners and Tudor watches out of, let's say the late 90s or, or late 1980s rather, into the early 1990s, is that Rolex was the company that received a lot of the technical uh, improvements and enhancements to the watches themselves. So Rolex was adopting better movements, better materials, leveraging things like sapphire crystals and you know things like that, whereas Tudor really didn't see an adaptation of those things until much later into the 1990s, which I think makes some of the, the you know, earlier references a lot cooler because they had a little bit more of that vintage or classic uh, element of watchmaking and form factor that you kind of lose with Rolex in the uh, earlier part of the 1980s um, versus Tudor who kind of carried on those things through even into like the, the late 1990s. So one of the things that I really like about this specific 79090, um, and this one dates specifically from 1992, is we still have a matte black dial. We have a bi-directional bezel as opposed to a bezel that has um, a click spring in it and that is unidirectional. Um, and I like the, the form factor of the case and the way that everything wears, uh, including a, an acrylic or plexiglass crystal as opposed to a sapphire crystal. Um, so the Tudor 79090 specifically came out in 1989. Um, and what's cool about the 79090 is that it leverages an ETA 2824-2, uh, which has a quick set date, which is really, really nice. So even though this watch carries over a little bit more of the vintage elements, matte dial, bi-directional bezel, um, you know, et cetera, it does include and incorporate a quick set date function, which I think is really, really cool. And also, you know, makes this watch kind of cool because it does carry over a lot of the, the vintage type of aesthetics that you would find in let's say like a Rolex 1680 or an early Rolex 16800. But obviously the price point is a lot different. The other thing that I think is really, really cool about this is that, you know, Tudor, um, was the was the brand or the company that got a little bit creative in the form factor of their watches. So what's kind of interesting about this is you have, um, I, I guess you would call them pyramids or triangles at the 12, uh, at the uh, six and at the nine, as opposed to the more traditional Rolex, uh, you know, dot and dash configuration of, uh, you know, their Submariners, which is still uh, in existence in, you know, out there today. So, um, Hello, how are you? Hello. <laughs> Remington, he's making a cameo. I think they're cool because the watch, as you hold it, as you feel it, as you experience it, it's very much a, a, a Rolex, but it's also not because you have this kind of cool dial configuration. You have a lot of carryover from more of the vintage models, uh, but yet this watch is, I would say, kind of, uh, post vintage pre modern um, if that's a thing because of you know the matte elements to the dial the you know form factor of, of everything else the Rolex Tudor relationship actually dates back to 1926 when Hans the founder of Rolex SA uh, wanted to create a more affordable uh, alternative to Rolex and uh, Tudor actually manufactured Submariners adjacent to the Rolex Submariner for many years. Matter of fact, in 1954, the year following the release of Rolex's uh, Submariner, Tudor released their first Submariner as an affordable alternative that didn't lack in quality or craftsmanship, yet leveraged a non-in-house Rolex movement. And the same thing kind of carried on well into the into the 90s until uh, kind of a separation between Rolex and, and Tudor, even today. 
Rolex and Tudor, uh, even though I think they're independent companies, they still very much leverage the same kind of uh, partnership and detailing and collaboration, uh, which I think is, is very, very cool. So um, this watch is available for sale on our on our website. The cool thing about these watches is that they're, that they're very affordable and accessible and you don't lack anything from a quality or craftsmanship perspective. Uh, you know, if you were to look at a Rolex uh, Submariner out of, you know, the 90s, or even look at more of a comparable to this Tudor Sub, which would be really more of like a 16800 or even a 1680, your price point is going to be starting in, you know, probably around the $10,000 range. Whereas, you know, a watch like this is, you know, in and around the $4,500 to $5,000 range, depending on the condition. So you get a lot of watch with a lot of history, a lot of heritage, a lot of quality for essentially half the price, which I think is really, really cool. So, um, like I said, this watch is available for sale on our website. I'll provide a link in the description below. Uh, it's a watch that I think is very, very cool. The condition on this specific example is is pretty, is, is I would say vintage mint. And what I mean by vintage mint is the watch has seen some use, it's seen some wear, but there's some nice case chamfering. Um, the bezel has kind of a little bit of patina, but it's taken on kind of almost like a black blue fade. Uh, the dial is free from any tritium or loom degradation or any loss and is free from any scratches. Really, really handsome watch. I think it looks great on a NATO or like a vintage strap. It wears exactly like a, a reference 1680. And the fact that the watch does have a, uh, a quick set date function, uh, I think makes this thing just worthy of, of collecting. And also it's a watch that I think that is at a price point for most of us collectors where it's not a $20,000 sub, it's five, you know, it's five grand, you can wear this thing. This watch passed the pressure test. I would take this watch diving, I'd take this watch in the pool. I wouldn't worry about traveling internationally with a watch like this because it's a tutor, but it's a really cool one. So in any case, guys, thanks for tuning in. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe, and we will see you in the next one. Thanks for tuning in.